Welch. Uh, thank you uh, very much. I'm going to ask uh, uh, Judge Park. Uh, you're the I'm, the, I'm a public defender. I think I'm the only one in the uh, Senate, and I've been delighted at the number of uh, public defenders who've been nominated. Uh, and our Constitution, of course, provides for the right of a zealous advocate for everyone uh, charged with a crime because it is about the process, not the individual. Uh, I just want to ask you if you agree, and I'm sure you do, about the necessity for zealous advocacy from the defense as well as from the prosecutors, and if so, why? It is, it is necessary in order to have a fair and just... Is your microphone on? It, it, it's necessary in order to have a fair and just um, criminal system that there be um, zealous representation on both sides of the aisle. Not only does our Constitution require it, but the case law requires it. It requires that, it, that federal public defenders be effective. And right, and that's the, the 1938 Supreme Court case, Johnson v. Zerps, then the 1963 Supreme Court uh, case, Gideon v. Wainwright, held that, that the Constitution requires appointment of counsel. Uh, can you tell me uh, whether, in your experience, we're living up to meeting that constitutional requirement? The Federal Public Defender's Office that I worked at certainly did. Um, there was time... Um, when I was there, the federal public defender be, was made sure to train the attorneys to be able to do our job and to do it zealously um, within the bounds of the law. And at that office, um, when I was there, I also participated in training other attorneys to, to do just that. That's great. And my understanding, according to statistics, that nine out of 10 uh, defendants in federal court, U.S. District Court, have appointed counsel. Is, mm. I, I would believe that that number may be may accurate, yes. Well, that's why I'm definitely hoping, as I've said before, that we maintain the budget. We don't cut it for the uh, federal defenders. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Judge uh, Kusaba. You know, my colleagues on the Republican side are asking us about some of your writing uh, and what you mean, and whether it's clear or it isn't, whether it's prose or poetry. But I, I have a lot of respect for the academic inquiry into uh, issues like what is property, how does it affect relationships. Uh, that's a normal area of legal inquiry, is it not? Whether people agree or not with what a particular writer says. Uh, uh, Senator Welch, I agree. I, 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 in, in order for me to love the law and love our country, I, I, you know, looking at things in, in a critical way just simply substantiates why our country and our democracy is as great as it is. Right. But then when you are in your role as an academic where it's open inquiry, which is different than your role as a judge, which is confined by the boundaries of the law. And I heard in one of your earlier answers your description of the process you go through, reading the briefs, testing them, uh, and the hypothesis. Uh, can you just explain that and what you would be doing in your role as a judge as opposed to in your role as a, I would say, academic? It is a profound obligation and duty to uphold the rule of law and stop. Uh, and in the course of the work that I do, uh, under the oath that I've taken as a magistrate judge in the District of Oregon, is to rigorously evaluate uh, the law, uh, if it's a jury trial, ensure that the rules of evidence are applied so the record can be complete and uh, without question and then to uh, apply those facts to the law as necessary. Thank you. And, you know, the question of the diversity came up, and everyone of you answered that you're in favor of diversity, but I know among some of my colleagues, there's apprehension that diversity means special treatment, and I just want each of you to have an opportunity to say that, uh, to, to indicate whether if you have a defendant, uh, diversity is going to determine uh, or affect 
uh, your decision about what the law says or requires. Any, yeah. Uh, no. Uh, no, Senator. No, Senator. No, Senator. Okay. No, Senator. All right. Uh, thank you very much, and congratulations on your nominations. Uh, I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Thank, thank you, Senator Welch. 